Hi everyone, this is DeFi Dad, and this is going to be a short video tutorial on how to navigate the new Matcha DEX. So uh, Matcha is a DEX aggregator that was created by the Zero X team. It is meant to allow you to get the best rates and the least amount of slippage and be able to, of course, you know, trade while maintaining custody of your assets on Ethereum. Uh, one thing to note here is a DEX aggregator is what one inch exchange is, it's what DEX.ag is, and what Paraswap is. So I think many of us are using these tools already. And probably what's most unique about Matcha is just the fact that it has a very pretty user interface. And we'll kind of like walk through some of it here and, and give you a sense of uh, what's different. So first thing is I go to matcha.xyz. And uh, when you get to the page, just the usual thing, you're gonna connect your wallet. So I'll connect MetaMask. If you use any sort of wallet connect, wallet, Coinbase wallet, or Bitski, you can connect it there. And then uh, next up, uh, I'll just search a pair here. If you search any asset, it'll give you some common pairings. Uh, but again, this is a swap, just like Uniswap or what you see on like one inch dot exchange. You can trade between any asset as long as it's uh, a digital asset on Ethereum. So I'll choose this. Uh, first thing I noticed is it, it really does look a lot like Robinhood. Uh, I believe that someone on the team was quoted saying to the block that they are trying to be like the Robin Hood of crypto and uh, no, no doubt about it. They're trying to create a really pretty uh, experience for trading. Uh, you'll notice here on the right hand side, this is really all that matters to me. I have a market order, so I'm going to pay whatever the market price is. And in this case, let's pretend that I start with DAI and that I'm going to buy ETH. And so if I put in that I'm going to buy uh, 10 DAI worth of ETH, here's how much I'm going to get. Uh, different than that, though, I could put in a limit order. So one thing you'll notice here is I'm currently trading between DAI and ETH. But what really happens on Matcha is you are trading with uh, wrapped Ether or WEATH, which is an ERC-20 token. So long story short, if you were to come into this and try to place this order, it just lets you know that BT dubs, you're going to receive WEATH instead of ETH, which isn't a problem because you can actually convert at any point between WEATH and ETH on this, you know, on this DEX and it's one to one. And so it's, it's, you know, it's a easy way to, uh, you know, switch back and forth. The reason that wrapped ether or weath exists is that you can't do quite a bit with ether, the native token versus weath, which is an ERC 20 token. And so this is something that often happens in the background of lots of different DeFi apps that folks use. You just don't realize it. Uh, so anyways, they're just really uh, transparent about the fact that you are in fact receiving weath. And if you were to exit, you know, from matcha or just walk away with your wallet per usual. If you need ETH back instead of WEATH, uh, you can go back and forth here between the two. Okay, the other thing is, actually, let's go back and make that WEATH again. Uh, as long as I am trading with WEATH and not ETH, I am able to place a limit order. And that's cool because a limit order allows me to get a better price or the best price uh, possible. And so instead of me just buying 10 DAI worth of ether and paying however much that is, I could say that I'd like to buy at 200 DAI or lower or better. And this order can run until I cancel it uh, or, you know, you can, You've got other choices here. You can let it run for a day, three days, or seven days. Uh, so that's cool. You know, it's just a, it's another option that we often use in stock trading apps like Robinhood, but we also, you know, like to use that in centralized exchanges like a Coinbase. And so this is, uh, this is great. And it's, it's a, it's a really easy to understand order form. And so I'm going to buy with 10 die. 
at a price of 200 DAI or better, or in this case, that would be lower, and the order just will not expire. And I'll get, in this case, I'll end up getting 0.05 uh, wrapped ether. So if I go to review the limit order, first thing I have to do, uh, one, the first of two steps I have to do here is approve permission to move my die. And so this is a really common step in all DeFi applications or all Ethereum applications. So let's go here and check what the gas price is. And I'm checking ethgasstation.info on my phone. And it looks like it'll go through if it's as low as uh, 24.2. So I'll put in, how about 28 guay? Cool, so I'm gonna save a little bit of money um, as opposed to what I was gonna pay originally. Just, I think like 20 cents there. The other thing is I'm gonna change the permission. Uh, I like to set custom spend limits. Sometimes this creates issues for me if I set the limit too low, but I think it's good. Uh, it's a good practice to not give unlimited approval. All right, so let's make it in this case 10 die. All right, that's it. So we've got the lowest amount of, uh, the lowest gas price set. And then I've also got permission to move 10 die. So this is my first time seeing this and th this is really nice. <laughs> I, I like, I like uh, a timer and just little animations like this to let me know what's going on. Let's see if it actually works. By the way, forgive me for, I sound like I'm whispering because my kids are asleep in the other room. So little bit of a lack of enthusiasm tonight, uh, but it's mostly me just trying not to wake up my children. All right, so what's happened here? Let's view the transaction. All right, cool, so we still got some time. Uh, one thing, I did notice is that the application suggested that that way price G W E I it suggested that I put it up as high as 41 way that would have pushed through the transaction in probably less than 30 seconds. That would be putting my gas price up as high as possible. Uh, that's fine. That obviously creates like a better experience here where it pushes through immediately, but since I'm used to using these applications, I have no problem waiting. So we'll come back to this in just a bit, but if you prefer to not wait, you can obviously just pay that extra few cents that I skipped on and uh, uh, the transaction should push through much faster. So my approval transaction for moving my die in my wallet has gone through and now I can place the limit order. So we're gonna uh, pay 10 die for 0.05 weath. That would be if the price is at 200 die or better. And then I, I think one of the you know awesome things right now about matcha is that there is no fee. So they've you know said that for now, there are no trading fees. My expectation is that there will be a fee in the future. Uh, this tends to be something that, uh, you know, DeFi teams or just crypto exchanges in general do this to get folks to start using the platform and, you know, get, get accustomed to it and, you know, um, build brand loyalty. So that may come back to us in the future with a fee. All right, so I'm placing my limit order, and this is the last transaction where I should have to pay. Oh, and that's good. Actually, I don't have to pay anything right now. So cool, good to know. So I'm just signing the transaction, and then it looks like we have prepared the trade, limit order's been placed, that's it. All right, and then if I click that new trade button, obviously I could continue to place more of these limit orders.
I am interested to know how do I cancel that? So let's check. I'm gonna go back to where I originally placed this order. Ah, there we go. Cool. Sorry, I just had to scroll down a bit. Uh, there it is, open orders. Let's check something else here. If we were, if we were looking at buying, uh, let's pretend that we are looking at a like a, a different swap here. So now I would be paying in Dai, and I would be getting SNX. All right, and there is no, there's no order showing here. So what I have to do is I have to know that I have placed an order using Dai in Weath. Otherwise I could lose track of it. Right now I don't see another place where I can see all of my open orders. Let's go back to the home page. Don't see anything here. Uh, let's see, go to account page again. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anywhere else that would show me any of my open uh, orders, orders that haven't been filled, but they are limit orders that would fill. And so let's go look at Weath die again. Okay, so I should see my order show up here below. There we go. So there's my open orders that have not been filled. And I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this just cause I wanna see what that looks like. All right, and so for me to cancel, let's see what MetaMask asks me to do. Okay. Yeah, this makes sense. So I, when I uh, placed the approval to move my die, I paid a certain amount of gas. This would be now actually um, canceling the order. So now you can't move my die. And so if I confirm that, the, the order is dead. Uh, I think I will leave this for now then just to see what happens. Uh, but cool, good to know. And yeah, just, just please be aware that the only way I would have known this is just by noting or remembering that I had placed a limit order. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure how I would be alerted about this. Uh, one, some, one thing that could come up in the future is the Ethereum push notification service, which uh, has been building. Those are the folks that could potentially work with like a matcha and then you could receive push notifications through their application when something like a limit order hits. Um, that's one of the ideas behind the Ethereum push notification service. They're decentralized push notifications that can be connected uh, to your Ethereum wallet, uh, which I think is really cool. I would love to use that here in this case. So when I'm using this and I think about the risks involved, there's a few. Uh, first off, there's always a smart contract bug risk. It can be mitigated with audits. You'll notice that on uh, Matcha's FAQ site, uh, they have trail of bits and consensus diligence having audited it. You can check out the results there. I'm not a smart contract auditor, so I I'm not going to read this and pretend that I feel any safer using the application. This is new. Uh, I, I just am very mindful of the fact that when something's new, there could be bugs still. And uh, even though I'm in control of my assets, again, I wouldn't wanna be using an application that has bugs. So just something I'm conscious of and not going to uh, start trading absolutely everything on this uh, when I might be using other DEXs. Another thing is uh, the fact that I am using some stable coins. This has less to do with matcha, but more to do with the fact that if I have exposure to stable coins and I'm using those on matcha, 
if the dollar peg were to fail on any of these stable coins ever, that would be pretty disastrous for me and anyone else holding those stable coins. That would make trading very difficult. Uh, the last thing is I'm not aware of what sort of admin key risk there is here, but I do always assume that with newer DeFi applications that there is likely some admin key that allows them to maybe, you know, shut down the, the decks if something disastrous were discovered. So anyways, that's something else. Hopefully someone will be able to, uh, uh, share more information on that. But for right now, I'm going to assume that there's some admin key that the team is in control of. The last thing I want to cover before I go is whether or not I'm getting the best rate on matcha. Uh, I'm not, suggesting that I must get the best rate in order to use matcha. Obviously, it's a really pretty interface to use, and there's no doubt that some folks will uh, use it just because of that. However, for me, I, I want to get the best rates and the least slippage possible. And I don't have a way here to look at order book depth, but I could compare quotes for, you know, like, let's pretend that I'm willing to pay 10,000 die to buy as much wheat as possible. And so I would get 44.92 uh, wheat or ETH in this case. If we go to uh, one inch, let's see what happens when I put in 10,000 die and see how much wheat I can get. So I'd get 44.919. And in this case, 10,000, I would get 44.946. So here's an example where I am, I'm actually getting a better rate on matcha. So that's good. Let's move it up to 100,000. So now I'm getting 447.7189. And by the way, these quotes are gonna change constantly. It's like just, you know, depending on all the trades going on, the liquidity uh, across all the different pools that one inch and matcha source from. Okay, so in this case, I'm getting 447.8849. So I am getting, I am getting more for my money in this example. Um, I don't have a hundred thousand die, and I have five hundred eighty-two die in this wallet. But if if I had a hundred thousand die, I could buy uh, four hundred forty-seven point five ether or weath, and this is four hundred forty-seven point eight eight. So just just a, a bit more there. I mean, almost like one eth. And the quotes are constantly changing here, but uh, let's check one more. Actually, let's use USDC instead. So if I were to buy with 10,000 USDC, I could get 44.25 weath on one inch. And here, Let's do USDC. So I would get 44.31 weath. And here I would get 44.25. So on matcha, I'm getting uh, more bang for my buck. Let's add another zero. If I were to spend 100,000 USDC, how much weath do I get? It's 441.91. And on matcha, I get 442.5707 here. So let's see, 442.5707, what versus 441.91. So yeah, just a little bit more bang for my buck there on a matcha. So, uh, you know, uh, th this isn't the most scientific way to go about, you know, testing where I'm going to get the best rate, but uh, it's cool. You know, it's so far it's, 
split pretty evenly there. Um, earlier, I was playing around with this, and I was actually finding that one inch had uh, better rates almost like nine out of 10 times, but that was a few hours ago when I was playing with it, and now I'm seeing it more evenly split. So, you know, uh, who knows? All right, so that's all I've got for you today. I hope this is helpful. Uh, I'm excited that there's now another DEX aggregator available and that it's got such like a pretty, you know, interface to use. Uh, it definitely reminds me a lot of Robinhood. I've used Robinhood before for trading stocks and uh, this, this definitely should resonate with someone who's less of a crypto native. And yeah, uh, anytime you can make, you can make for uh, a prettier tool I think that's good, you know, just because it, it might attract more new folks to try trading on DEXs versus using centralized exchanges. And I think the thing I like the most here is I, th I think the limit order works really well. You know, it's it's it clearly reminds me here of Robinhood. They they state here's what you're paying, here's the price. So in this case, I'd be paying. Uh, a dollar ninety eight or one point nine USDC per SNX, and then when does it expire? And you can place limit orders to basically never expire in this case. So that's cool. Uh, the one downfall of this is I'd love to see all of my open, unfulfilled limit orders in one place because right now I have to keep track of any limit orders I, I've placed on this platform. Otherwise, I won't. I won't know um, when they've executed or if they're still open. Uh, so anyways, I hope this is helpful. And let me know if you have any questions or comments in the YouTube video, or also uh, you can reach me through Twitter on any of the posts. Just comment with questions and I'd love to help.